What's up everybody, if you're finding us, you're probably searching around for the new Pipeline Milwaukee wonderfulness that's been released. Mmm, so much wonderfulness. Well, the good news is, is Jay and I, we really don't have much of a life, so we decided to compile all this information for you and make it easy for you so you don't have to search all over the interwebs. So one of the biggest announcements that we had was the, the new Forge batteries new Forge. for the M18. The big question was like, are they going to do stack packs like we see from Flex and DeWalt? So the XC is actually full of the pout cell technology. But again, that's what's coming this year. Next year, there's going to be a new M18 Red Lithium Forge 12 amp hour battery that's going to use the tabless cells, um, which I saw uh, Sandy was asking about those tabless cells. The, the short version for what I understood in the presentation was uh, there's, it looks like there's like more contact. Technically, this is a technology that we actually saw Tesla talking about back in 2020 that is still not quite making it into their Y series, but it's coming soon. It's going to be unbelievably effective at moving power. Yeah, so the M18 is a 6.0, yeah, 80% charge in 15 minutes. So they're saying their 6.0 is equivalent to the power output of the 12.0. But basically, if you run a grinder or it's all with a 12.0 battery, performance-wise, that's what you'll get with this new forge. It'll just be lighter and smaller. Uh, on the MX side, the 8.0 and 12.0, you know, having a battery that's basically the same size as the current MX large battery, and then having twice the runtime and higher outputs, that's going to make a huge difference see venting on the front face of that pack. Sure. Uh, one of the challenges that happens with batteries as they're on tools is, think of the cutoff saw, it's going to get really hot really quickly. Sure. And you gotta get the heat out of it. So one of the new technologies with this is called Cool Cycle. So this charger is Cool Cycle capable. The 12 volt and the 8 volt are also Cool Cycle capable. And what you'll see is we're gonna have the fog come up, the venting, well, in the fans from the supercharger, you can kind of see the behind it, the high speed airflow will start pulling that heat out. And so this is also a good graphic too, uh, that shows how that air is passing through. What yep. this results in down here is the ability to start charging sooner versus what you're dealing with today, which is a period of waiting time and then starting to char or charge. Gotcha. So you're getting two X more capacity and in 65 minutes versus 106 minutes. Okay, so one thing I, you know, we obviously have the carry-on that's been out and it's been very popular. And now we're upgrading to what they call a roll-on. All the batteries are in that box. So it's just integrated batteries. 7,200 watt peak, 3,600 watt continuous with 2.5 kilowatt hours supply. So, I mean, you're getting a lot of runtime. 20 amps. So 20 amp breakers on the front. We've got USB stuff here as well. So you've got micro usb usb a and you can just slide your you know plug it in slide your phone inside price point they actually put two price points out one at 4500 and one at 5500 they did put pack out on it i was uh, gonna say yeah they got the pack out on the top so you can actually i mean it should do that for every milwaukee yeah. item yeah you should literally so. put it packed out on everything <laughs> i don't know why they don't do that right a lot of the mx announcements we've already really touched and played with at world of concrete yep uh which we got a video there here somewhere in the links. There's a second generation of the 14 inch cutoff saw. So the 14 inch cutoff saw was gonna be the hero of MX. The first generation saw was a little disappointing from a runtime perspective. Mm -hmm. It had a lot of power, but you could basically drop it five inches in the concrete and you would get, you know, six to eight feet. So one of the most exciting things people are anxious to hear about is all the pack out options that were announced the pipeline. First, there's two new, they called a structured tote and a structured tool bag. They first launched some soft sided bags kind of in Milwaukee fashion. They really like refined it second go around. I mean, these are high end. When they did the demo for Rob from a tool show, they held up a competitor and they yanked it and it ripped apart. Uh, you know, they had a hundred pounds of weight in it and they were, oh, okay. you know, they came out with uh, two new drawers. One that has three drawers with two two smaller drawers and a, and a bigger deep drawer. And then one that has four drawers. These are the same like height as the existing two and three drawer. Another big thing was that all of the drawers, including the existing two and three drawers, moving forward, gonna come with all the dividers. Now looking through the information, I saw a, uh, 
a new rolling toolbox, which I was a little confused by because it looks exactly the same. I, I, what What's the difference of that? They're coming out with a handle replacement. So for 60 bucks, you can take your current rolling pack out, swap the handle out and put a new one in and it'll be low profile. So it can fit under tonneau covers, but all of the base units moving forward will have that lower profile handle on it. So, oh wait, there's one more pack out thing. The uh, insulated bottles with the, the chug lid. So these are uh, an 18 ounce, 24 ounce, and a 36 ounce. Fully insulated water bottles with lids. They also have a, like just a twist lock mount plate. For 10 bucks, mm -hmm. you can mount your cup holder wherever. So you can mount it on the top or where on the side of it. But that, I was pretty excited about the, the bottles. They did some drop testing and they were super durable. So they were shown black and red and they were saying price point 35 to 50. So those are, I mean, those are very exciting announcements for pack out. And unfortunately for the pack out lovers, that's not, that, that's really it. It's about. mostly just kind of upgrading what's already there is the focus yes. this year with pack out. So there's no shortage of jigsaws out there. There's all kinds of options, but Milwaukee said, you know what? We need another one. So their M12 jigsaw that came out with like 10 years ago was amazing. It was a little trigger thing, revolutionary. <laughs> This is, this is a, a standard barrel grip, um, but it's a very, very thin. It looks to be very nimble. Uh, my guess is that it's gonna outperform a lot of D-handle. Definitely gonna be very compact in design, variable speed, overall settings, has blade storage on it. I, I love barrel grip style, it's super compact. 169 bucks, um, coming out in like two months. Okay, now moving on to the uh, the plumbing side of things, we got some new hand tools that were announced. So with the new format of how they did pipeline, there it is. which is just everybody goes everywhere and does whatever they want, feel like there's not a lot of coverage on some of the hand tools. Um, but they did do a new uh, faucet swap out wrench uh, for 30 bucks, coming like very soon, another month or two. Um, this is, you know, to get back when you're installing, uninstalling faucets. You gotta get in a really tight spot. But uh, <laughs> aluminum self-adjusting pipe wrenches coming kind of into the year, uh, looking at a 60 to $80 price range. I think, yeah, for electrical and mechanical, they're really gonna start seeing more um, USA made stuff, but it's gonna start like kind of the high level and then Makes sense, way. yeah. So one thing I noticed with these hand tools and what kind of threw me off, honestly, was uh, with the big push of the USA made hand tools, yeah. that they didn't keep that going. When are we going to see new Made in the USA stuff? Uh, new Made in the USA stuff? So this product just ships. Uh, right. You're going to see more and more product come out of that factory and looking at things like kits coming late next year. So moving on to the electrical hand tool. So that was plumbing. Yeah. Electrical now. Out of this list here, I know the wire stripper cutters we actually have on the website now. You can go pre-order. There, there's new strippers, but there's also, I mean, they were also talking about a whole line of hex keys coming, um, insulated, slim tipped screwdriver sets, which I was really intrigued to learn more. I didn't see a ton of coverage there. I know these are coming kind of later this year. They had some cable cutters, some electrical scissors. Another huge one that I saw was a little square angle level. So basically I, I'm assuming this is to put on conduit. So when you're measuring conduit, you can, you can put it on and it'll detect the angle that you're bending. So there, there's some really exciting stuff coming for electrical. A lot of it's coming kind of later in the year. Now another announcement we have is the M18 Bluetooth speaker. What's exciting about the Bluetooth speaker? So this looks like to be an upgrade. This is gonna be coming October, same $179 price point. What is the difference between um, this and what already exists? We're talking about 3.5 inch subwoofers and yeah. two high-end range tweakers and balanced sound experience. USB-C charging it's coming in October. So next in the lineup, we are going to talk about the uh, there's new M18 high torque impact wrenches. This is actually the third generation. What is better about this new generation? So yeah. they made it a little more powerful. 1200 foot pounds fastening torque, 1600 foot pounds nut busting torque. It's lighter and smaller. So they have a standard battery option, but then they're also gonna later on release a single yeah. forge battery kit. Now um, I should say with, with the torque, ratings, they did state that that's with the new Forge battery. They did not say anything about like a similar version 
the three quarter inch, which is a lot of people are asking about um, from Pipeline. So they also have the M18 torque control impacts, which is a half inch and a three eighths inch. But what does torque control even mean? Ask them how it senses the torque and does it just shut off? Yes, so it automatically shuts off after setup. Okay. And I can talk through the technology over here. Okay. So this is three new proprietary sensors that we developed over the last four years that are inside of these impact wrenches. And every time you are doing an application, it's recording that data and filtering it through a torque control algorithm that was developed with machine learning. So you can see an example of that, what that might look like for an example application here. We're taking into account uh, the movements of both the hammer and the anvil, but also the uh, battery voltage, the battery age, the, uh, oh, wow. yeah, a lot of different factors are going into place to ensure that we're not only repeatable, but also adaptable on our job site applications that these tools are being used on. You know, when you're doing these large jobs, they want you to verify that you have tested every single bolt. So mm -hmm. a lot of times you have to bolt it and then you have to separately get out a torque wrench and right. torque it to a spec. Then you have to come calibrate that every six months and make sure that torque wrench is calibrated. Uh, in theory, this would eliminate that completely. And you'd have one tool that does it. Um, this is gonna come out later this year. So there's also an M12 auto boroscope. It's optimized for that technician in the automotive environment, delivering on addressing four key frustrations that we heard from users like you. So the first one of those is gonna be access. Second, that clear diagnosis with that strong image quality. Third of those is gonna be durability, and that fourth is those easy use. How quick you walk you through is how that boroscope addresses those. So first is gonna be that access. We've got a five millimeter camera head right here. So when you compare that to eight and a half millimeter camera heads, you see a huge size difference there, right? So that five millimeter camera head give us that max access in those tight applications, spark plug holes, fuel injector ports, diesel glow plug holes. In addition, you've got a high definition camera on the front right here with LEDs. You've also got a side view camera too that I can switch to as well. So you can really oh, get that's that cool. yeah. diagnosis inside the engine, yeah. And once we uh, zoom in a little bit here, looking inside the actual engine, you can see we're inside the spark plug hole. I can switch to that side view camera. I can easily move it around there and see what's all around me, try to get a little better view. And once I'm there, I can record photos, record videos, and zoom in up to four times and make sure that I'm seeing those hairline cracks, that possible damage, everything there. Then you can go ahead and you can export that to your SD card right here. Yep, that connects to your computer. You're good to go. You got that diagnosis, it's easy to go. The durability is also really important. So we've yeah. got heat sense, temperature alert technology here. So okay. that camera head is getting a little bit too hot in those engines that can reach very high temperatures. Yeah. You don't know how hot it is in there, right? Yeah. You put that camera in there, it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna alert you when it reaches 160 degrees. Oh. And then if it gets to 195 degrees where it's getting to the point where it could be dangerous to the camera head, it's gonna yeah. turn the boroscope off. So it'll shut it down so you know to pull out that camera right there. You're good to go. Other big thing is that ease of use, right? We want an easy to use product For right sure. here. For sure, yeah. So we've got a rotatable camera head, 270 degrees rotatable. I can put that anywhere in that engine block, set it down, and get two hands on that camera cable there so I can easily oh, that make those micro adjustments, right? Yeah. And the last thing, that's powered by our M12 system too, right? So that means no more alkaline battery frustrations. You've got 150 plus compatible solutions there. Makes it nice and easy. 499 coming out end of the year. So next we have the uh, the brushless rotary tool, which is just this little guy. It's a nice M12. They have one existing, but they said, hey, we need some more power in this thing. Yeah, right? absolutely. So yeah, if you're doing one of those like internal, like uh, cutting pipe or something from the inside, I'm sure that can bog down. So yeah, brushless. They also updated the, um, like it's a quick adapter now, $200 and coming out end of the year. So tell me about the M18 dual brake grinder. Oh, just tell him about it. Tell me all about it. All right, so we have a lot of customers who need brakes in their grinder, safety feature. So this is a one step above that. Dual trigger means you actually have a trigger on the handle and a trigger on the base. So that means that handle has to have all the electronics run into it. So they did something pretty clever here where you can actually adjust that handle like back and forth, but then you can also rotate it in and out. I don't think anybody else has anything like it. Um, but if you're requiring two hands on a tool like a grinder, which makes a lot of sense because it's a dangerous tool, it has also has the auto stop like if it rotates, if you drop the tool or something, it'll stop. It looks like a similar performance to what they currently have in a, in a five inch. 349 coming out later this year. There's a lot of rotary laser options out there. Yes. Milwaukee wanted to jump into this game. What's the key differences here between what we have now and what 
this is. So they have a red laser and then they have a green laser. Um, they're doing the red laser as the exterior and the green as the interior, which makes a lot of sense. Really excited to publicly announce finally to you guys today our M18 rotary laser program with a big focus on impact protection and simplified setup. What I mean by that is, as you can see, we have really robust handles and top bumper to protect your tool if it tips or falls on the job site, meaning that you're not going to be out a uh, really expensive tool and having to replace that. Uh, and then when it comes to simplified setup, really trying to make these complex tools that are typically unapproachable by a lot of users on site simpler, easier to use. Uh, and when it comes to our horizontal specific laser, uh, this is going to be your guy that's going to be primarily targeting any kind of concrete form work, flat work, footings, uh, and even dirt work. And then moving into our dual slope laser, this is going to be the guy for any kind of slope work. So not only does it have the ability to pitch in one direction, it can actually simultaneously pitch in two directions. Any kind of slope work, whether that be uh, sidewalks, ramps with ADA requirements, any kind of underground pipe utility install that's gravity fed, this sloping laser is going to take a lot of the mental math out of the equation for you. So these seem to be really durable. I mean, these are definitely going to be some of the toughest kind of job site lasers that you're going to find. And they're coming <laughs> kind of later this year. Okay, so the M18 strut shear. All right. So price point on it's $37.50, so it's not that cheap. No. Obviously this is for very large jobs you're gonna use. Um, this is gonna be December uh, this year, so. Okay, so the outdoor power equipment, that was actually really exciting. Starting off with a 17 inch dual battery string trimmer, and they said more powerful than any gas or any battery powered string trimmer out on the market today. Correct. They were running it in pipeline against uh, some gas units, and it looked mm. like it Oh, they were cutting cardboard. It definitely is powerful. I mean, it's running off two batteries. Yeah. I mean, the I own personally the string trimmer yeah. that's out now, and that thing puts out plenty yeah. of power for no, me. It's no wonderful. Problem. So I can't imagine throwing two batteries on there. Yep. Making it what 36? 36 volt. Yeah. So they yeah. did they did confirm that it's not just a runtime thing. It is it is mm -hmm. about power. So this is definitely aimed at professionals. $7.99 is the price point. Um, it's coming out later this year. And moving on, it looks like they're uh, expanding their uh, Quick Lock uh, yeah, accessories. So, so Quick Lock got a lot of, it, they got a blower, a reciprocator, a bed refiner, cultivator. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of the kind of secondary kind of attachments, but it looks like there's a full line now for Quick Lock. Oh, and they also did a hedge trimmer. So the, the current one is articulating. It's a little longer. This one is right. more compact and it's stationary. So one complaint I would have with the the current hedge trimmer, if you're just trying to do regular edges, you know, you're kind of far out, mm -hmm. you've got to adjust the head. This is going to keep it a little, little tighter. So I, I think this is a better overall solution for trying to really just round out all of the things that they might have been missing in there. Another thing for the professional market, and they have a telescoping pole saw and a telescoping kind of pruning shear, but you're going to have that ability to go 13 feet. It seems like this year is, you know, they're really targeting kind of going high end professional. Now we're talking about a dual powered backpack blower. So 650 CFM, um, you know, really geared towards probably putting two 12 O's on there and going a long time. Price point on this one, 499 bear, which doesn't seem that unreasonable. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's a thousand dollars more for batteries and chargers. You know, so they're, they're saying early, you know, January, February timeframe. So some information that snuck by us that we that we noticed in watching um, all of our favorite influencers touring the building. An M12 uh, 18 gauge Brad Nailer coming next year. So uh, inch and a half is the is the max capacity on that one. But I mean, it it looks like that would be amazing to have. So there you have it. That's our that's our homework that you're seeing in front of us here. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Hooray! A, lo a lot of this stuff, we will do a blog post to go along with this, and we're really gonna give a lot of the details about um, specs and about model numbers uh, and launch dates. So that information will be available. What's your most exciting one? What do you got? Uh, yeah, I mean, for, for what we've seen, I, I was kind of expecting kind of a half inch impacts and some of that stuff. Yeah. Kind of surprises the, um, that big old power station I feel like Pipeline is a good kind of a look into the future of like where they're, where Milwaukee's spending a lot of time and energy. So everything I've been seeing now is more kind yeah. of focused on the professional. So I think that's where they're going to be spending a lot of time and energy. Other things, I, I you know, I liked all the pack out stuff. I just, I, I feel like you always want to see more pack out. More pack out. More yes. pack out. So thank you for watching this very long video. Hopefully you're still with us. 
Uh, make sure you subscribed if you're not already and uh, leave us a comment on what your favorite part of Pipeline was. If you have any other questions, leave us a comment or give us a call or send us an email or write us a letter. Whatever you prefer, just get a hold of us and we'll help you out. If you're looking for even more content from us, subscribe to our channel or check out one of these videos here. Thank you for watching. Now get back to work. I did not to. <laughs>